Most of us at some point in time in our lives are going to struggle with getting to sleep or staying asleep. It's just a part of living. And oftentimes the reason we struggle with sleep is because of depression, anxiety and stress, or a medical event that's occurring in our life. Today, I'm going to talk about some basic skills that you can use and give you some items that you either probably have around your house or that you can purchase that can also help improve your sleep. So come on in, let's get started. Before we dive in to the skills and things that you can use around your house to maximize those skills, I want to be clear that some of you may have medical conditions that may be contributing to your sleep disturbances. So I strongly encourage you to consult with your medical provider. And these skills can be used in conjunction to support whatever your primary care physician or mental health provider is doing with you. Most of you have probably heard of sleep hygiene. I talk with clients about it all the time. For those of you who are not aware of sleep hygiene, it is a checklist of things that you can do to make sure that you are setting yourself up for a successful night's sleep. Now, there are so many YouTube videos and articles and research out there all about sleep hygiene. I'm not going to go through the whole thing because I really want to dive into the things that I talk with my clients about to help them kind of boost their sleep hygiene skills. But I do believe that there are three things in sleep hygiene that I want to make sure that I cover because it's something that I see with most people. And I'm already prepared for you to glare at the camera when I say some of these things. I'm okay with it. I've been a therapist for over 20 years. I'm used to my clients going, oh no dog, this isn't gonna work. Trust me, if you do these things, you will see some improvement. Okay, so are you ready? Have a bedtime routine. Okay, so what does that mean? The bedtime routine includes the time that you go to bed and the time that you wake up. It should be routine. In the hour before you go to bed, you should be doing pretty much of the same things each night so your body knows, oh yeah, it's bedtime. So that hour before, you want to dim the lights, maybe you want to put on some soft music, maybe watch a comedy, uh, do not watch the news. Let me repeat that again. Do not watch the news. If you are a 10 p.m. news watcher, stop it. Stop, stop, stop. Watch the news at 6 p.m. Not a whole lot's gonna happen between 6 p.m. and 10 p.m. And if it does, so many of us have cell phones, we'll get a news alert. So if aliens have just landed on the planet, trust me, you're gonna know about it without having to watch the 10 p.m. news. And some of you may be thinking, but I need to know the weather. Again, we have cell phones. Get your weather from the weather app. And that doesn't mean get on your phone and then look at the news on your phone. Like, are you seeing what I'm saying there? Like, don't do the news before bedtime. Okay, you got it? <laughs> so the idea is that at that hour before bed, you wanna do things that put you in the mindset of relaxing, of calm and peace and tranquility. So anything that does not move you in that direction, it's a no-go. Then in the morning, you wake up at the same time. Yes, at the same time. And when I say in the morning and you wake up at the same time, I mean also on the weekends. When we make adjustments on the weekend, we actually create jet lag and we set ourselves up for Sunday night, not wanting to go to bed at the time that we need to go to bed to get up to get to work Monday morning on time. So if you keep things pretty steady, pretty constant, it's going to be easier for you to get to sleep. Tip number two, go to bed when you are sleepy. Sleepy, not tired or fatigued or exhausted. I'm talking about sleepy. You know how kids can be after you've taken them to the amusement park or you've done something really active all day and you put them in the car and you can tell that they're sleepy because their little heads are doing a little nod and you're like, oh, you're sleepy. And they're like, no, no, I'm not sleepy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what I'm talking about. A lot of times what'll happen is that people will get in bed because it's time to go to bed, 
but they're not sleepy and they end up laying in bed and they toss and turn and they stare up at the ceiling and they stare at the clock and they do all these things. What happens over time is that your body makes the association that your bed is a place where you can toss and turn and worry and be frustrated and annoyed. We don't want our bed to be associated with frustration and anxiety and anger. We want it to be associated with relaxation and calmness. That when you get in bed, if the thought occurs to you, huh, I haven't fallen asleep yet, do some anchoring or some meditation or some mindfulness activities to help relax your body so you can go to sleep. And after you try that for a few minutes and you still feel like, yeah, it's just not happening, then get out of the bed, yes get out of the bed. Just a little bit, I'm gonna give you some ideas of what you can do. Third thing, make sure that the temperature in your room is chilly. Now, experts will say 65 degrees is the magic temperature. Everybody's kind of personal thermostat is a little bit different. And so kind of know what the temperature is when you feel chilly, you feel cold. Because what you're going for is that sense of, you wanna curl up with a blanket. If you've ever gone on vacation and you get in the hotel room and you drop the AC down really low, because you would never do that in your house because you don't wanna pay the AC bill for that, but you do it in a hotel room, don't you always sleep so much better? So those are the big three ones. And there are others, and I really strongly encourage you to know all the skills. And I'm gonna drop in the description a number of other YouTubers that have done a fantastic job going through the entire list. Are you ready for the things, for the little nuggets that I share with my clients? Of course you are. Oh, but before I go, if you're liking the video so far, push the like button down below. Go on, push the button so that way YouTube can spread the love into YouTube universe. The next segment is really kind of like my favorite things meets information that I've learned over the years to help people really maximize the sleep hygiene skills. So one of the first things I'm going to share with you, it's really one of my favorite things. Some of you who have been around know that I have chronic back pain. For most of us, we move around in the middle of the night. And if you have chronic back pain, moving around can wake you up out of your sleep and keep you up. And so I found this fabulous pillow right here. Um, called the Snoogle. Ah. And it is actually um, advertised as a pregnancy pillow. What I love about it is that it keeps me stable and it's super soft and I can curl up around it. I can sleep on my side or kind of on my side, whatever I'm needing at night. And it keeps me pretty stable throughout the night so I don't roll around and wake up in pain. It is kind of pricey, but I will say that these have been around for a while and you can usually find kind of an off-brand that's a little bit cheaper. It's a game changer. So, Snoogle. I will put a link down below. And for actually most of the things I'm going to be talking about today, um, I will try my best to have a link down below in the description so you can kind of readily get it. A few years ago for Christmas, I bought my mom a weighted blanket. She said it was life-changing. She still swears up and down that it's the best gift I ever got for her, which I'm just thinking, but how about all those cheesy gifts I made for you when I was in elementary school? Like, it's better than those? How is that possible? Seriously? And a lot of my clients that have trauma um, or high anxiety or depression, they say that it really helps calm them when they use their weighted blanket. And there are videos that explain kind of why we think a weighted blanket works. Um, but long story short, the material that it's made out of um, allows your body to stay cool during the night. And also the weight of it sends kind of this anchoring sensory information that tells your body that you are safe. And so it just helps you calm and relax and just go to sleep. So weighted blankets. You know how I talked about having a routine before you go to bed? Well, some people find it helpful to take a shower or a bath. So if you're one of those people that taking a shower or a bath before bed is really relaxing for you, find some products that are really good at helping you calm. Um, Dr. Chills, oh, by the way, this is not sponsored. Like nobody, all these products that I'm talking about, no one's paying me to talk about them. It's just kind of what I've discovered over time with myself or just working with clients. Now, if there's somebody out there connected to these products that wants to sponsor me, I mean, I'm not gonna say no. <laughs> no. Call me. Outside of that, Dr. Tills is a 
amazing. Chronic pain, this is what I use to help me relax. Um, for those of you who maybe who can't get into the shower if you have chronic pain, um, Dr. Tills has a body wash that has Epsom salt in it. And I know that there are other brands that have that too. Um, and even if pain really isn't your issue, we you know that things related to our olfactory systems can be really relaxing and calming. Um, and for those of you who maybe don't like showers, this product right here is really good. I've gotten this for a few friends. Um, and it works like bath bombs or aromatherapy. You just put them in the floor of your of your shower or your bathtub. Whenever you turn on the water, it dissolves and releases good smells into the shower. Along the lines of good smells, an hour before bed, doing things that's calming. I'm using a diffuser that has good smells that are calming. Um, and what is calming for people is different. Like here's some candles, here's a diffuser. It's gonna be different. Research would say like vanilla and lavender are your calming scent. I personally, <clears throat> Don't judge me, but I personally do not like the smell of lavender products. The great thing is that these days you can find scents that, I mean, are wide range. I'll put some links down below but where you can get some candles and some diffusers and some good essential oils. Remember how I mentioned if you've been laying there in bed and you haven't fallen asleep yet, try to do some kind of relaxation exercise. Use a meditation app. Um, so the ones I used to suggest to clients are Headspace, Calm, Insight Timer, and I'll put information about them down below. Now we have food items. Almonds and walnuts are really good um, about um, stimulating our melatonin to help us get to sleep. Um, so these are really good. I'm not saying eat the whole bag. I'm saying maybe just have like a handful of some before you go to bed. And along those lines of things, that can help you calm. Having tea. Chamomile is the one that most people know about. Also passion fruit's really good. I personally, whenever I get stressed, and I know a lot of people, whenever they get stressed or they feel overwhelmed, they often talk about having kind of gastrointestinal issues. And so I found that lemon, ginger, and peppermint teas are really excellent ways to naturally calm that kind of upset stomach. Obviously they have to be, you know, decaffeinated because otherwise you're defeating the purpose. So make sure that you drink them in the beginning of your hour bedtime routine because we don't want you to have to wake up in the middle of the night to use the restroom. What do you do if you get up in the middle of the night and you can't do anything? There's things like coloring. You can knit. You can watch a favorite TV show, preferably something that's kind of funny. Um, laughter has endorphins in it and endorphins often help us relax, which is really good if we're feeling depressed or anxious. And um, if we can laugh, then that tells our body we're not in danger. And so it's more likely to relax and allow us to go to sleep. You can do Sudoku. You can do um, word searches, get like the big print word searches that you can get at the dollar store. You can do a puzzle, um, one that's pretty simple. And also do some reading, but boring reading, right? So don't be reading the last 50 pages of a spy thriller where you're about to find out who done it, right? You want to be reading like a journal on why frogs sound the way that they sound, right? Like, I thought that would be interesting, but probably not likely to keep you up all night, at least, but I mean, unless you're really interested in frogs, but you get the idea, right? You get the idea, right? The next thing is journaling. Oh, every therapist says journaling. Um, I had people journal in a lot of different ways, and it really kind of depends on what you think is going to be most helpful. The easiest thing to do is gratitude journaling. I did a video a few weeks ago on gratitude and how to really kick up your A-game when doing gratitude journaling, and I will link that at the end of this video. Another way of doing gratitude journaling, I used to do this with my goddaughter, and I've shared this with other people, and they will do this with, as a family at night before bed, and that is called, what is your rose of the day? And the rose of the day means the bud. What is your bud? What is a positive thing that happened to you? What is the thing that brought you joy? And then there's the thorn. What's the thing that wasn't pleasant, that might have been upsetting or caused um, some pain? And then the third part is the stem. What is the thing that you're looking forward to tomorrow? And how can you prepare for that thing that you're excited about tomorrow? And I find that that journaling exercise is really good at helping you get balance in how you view your life. You can recognize the joy, you can see the things that are painful, and you can anticipate the positive things that are going to occur the next day instead of anticipating the things that may be potentially sad or difficult. 
And if you do it on a regular basis, you can start to see a pattern in the things that bring you joy and the things that are more troubling. And you can start to strategize about how to bring in more joy in your life and how to problem solve about those things that are a little bit more problematic. So very helpful. A few years ago, I went to a women's retreat and one of the speakers talked about um, how we all have specific areas that are spiritual warfare for us. Really sitting still and allowing God to point out where your areas of spiritual warfare are and then getting a concordance and identifying scripture that speaks to those areas so whenever you are feeling lonely or rejected or betrayed or depressed or anxious you can use scripture to pray over that situation it's one of the things i started doing many years ago i actually used the scripture john 14 27 and that helped me tremendously with my anxiety. Every time I'd feel anxious, I would start saying that scripture. And over time, my anxiety got so much better. Start writing down scripture that will help you deal with those areas that are a struggle for you and pray them, speak them, meditate on them whenever that issue comes up in your life. Hopefully something in there was helpful. Um, if something resonated with you, if you would like for me to do another video that expands on any of these tips, like you don't understand it or you want you want more information, absolutely let me know down below. I'd be more than happy to talk more in depth about any of the things that I mentioned today. And remember, go down to the description. There's links to videos. There's links to some of these items. And um, thank you so much for hanging out with me today. And as always, take care of yourself, take care of others, and have a blessed day. And I will see you in the next video. Bye.